everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today we're talking about the Picket Fence life-changing brushes. Now, are they really gonna change my life? I'm sure some of you are screaming at your screens now saying, yes, you're gonna love them, they're gonna change your life, they're gonna change your ink blending. I must say, I'm a little bit skeptical. Now, you all know I am a brush person. Now, I did a review probably around about a year ago, maybe even more now, talking about brushes versus blending foams versus like sponge options and daubers. You can check that out in the top right hand corner. I took some flack because previous to having the Nuvo option, we all had the Ranger blending foam, you know, the one with the stick handle. Um, and I took some flack because I kind of emphasized the fact of, unless you really practice with this and you follow the golden rules, you can get often some hard edges and it's hard to get rid of those, which is why I like working with brushes so much because you don't tend to get those effects and you don't have that. So I took some flack for that video. It kind of was um, a little bit over egged as to the results. And I really talked about how paper choices was one of the most important things, if I, or one of the most important factors in that video. So you can go and check that out if you want to. Anyway, brushes tend to be my favorite choice. So when everyone keeps talking about these life-changing brushes, of course you knew I had to buy a set and check them out. Now here I have the full set. You can get different sets, you can get smaller sets, all of those kinds of things. Some people just buy the makeup brush alternatives, but I thought, well, if I'm gonna try them out, I'm gonna try out the real thing and see what it's all about. And I have a range of just oxides here that we're going to try them out with. Now if you um, are wondering what ink blending options are out there, I thought I would grab them all and quickly talk through those before we dive into the uh, life-changing versions. So my current favorites are either the Nuvo stencil brushes, and you know all the links will be in that video description for you, of course. Um, and if you're a Perks member, you can save tons of money on all of your Tonic Studios purchases and all of your crafty purchases. But um, these are my favorite. Uh, you get them in packs, they come in various sizes. And um, the other option I like are these, these are the double-ended uh, Tonic Nouveau brushes. And the reason I like these is because I put a sticker on each end, one for my regular Distress inks, and one end for my oxide ink. So then I have one per color family. You don't have to have one for every color, but I'll have one for my blues, one for my reds, one for my pinks, etc., etc. You get the idea. Other options you have are the smaller brushes they do. They do this size. These also work really nicely too. Again, but you don't want to contaminate your oxide with your regular Distress inks. You want to make sure you keep separate brushes. You can, of course, wash and let air dry in between. That works too. You have your blending foams. I really like the tonic option if you're gonna go down that road. I find these last me longer than the Ranger ones. Again, personal preference. And we do have Ranger in our perks program, so you can go down that road if you want to. You have the silicone sponge option. This is a really nice option too. Um, nice and squidgy, very tactile, gives you a really nice result. Or you have something like the sponge daubers from scrapbook.com. I also did a video on these. They come in this size and a jumbo size. Again, links in that video description below. You can check all of those things out, but let's try those life-changing ones. So let's open up. You can see it's a brand new packet. I haven't even opened them up. So we can open them together and see what we get. This is the full set. So this has everything in. These are brand, brand new. Um, there is a piece of card in here. I don't know if there's any instructions. Nope. So we're just going to dive in. So you can see they all come like this. You've got a nice kind of spongy surface, foam um, brush surface on here. You've got the handle to hold. The idea being you then just kind of blend your ink like this. And I grabbed an array of the green oxides. You can see I've got pine needles, lucky clover, evergreen bow, and cracked pistachio here. And we've got them in a variety of sizes. So we have everything from our really large here down to our small tips. So this is more like the kind of thing your dentist might use. We've also got like the really fine slithers here too. So we've got really fine sizes. Um, if you want to do some more kind of detailed work or maybe if you wanted to do like a stripe type deal. So you've got lots and lots of different options to say. This is the full set. You can get smaller sets too. There are budget options there. But let's just blend straight onto our cardstock to start with. So I'm gonna start off with the largest one on my cracked pistachio. So I'm gonna start with the golden rolls starting off the edge, blending on. 
Of course, I'm working onto my glass mat here too. So I am getting a really nice, smooth blend. Of course, I'm working with oxides, which also give me that option. You can also see how everything just fades out really nicely. So that's something that I wouldn't necessarily get with um, other options. So I do like that, so I can fade out almost into nothing. Maybe if I wanted to go to a slightly darker shade, I could take my evergreen bow, like this. And I'm now going to start shading around here. So you can see again, really nice smooth blend. And we could go back with some cracked pistachio. And we can blend those two together. So, so far I have to say, very impressed. You can see there I've got a really nice smooth blend where the two meet. and I'm being able to blend those two colors together seamlessly. So they really do look like I've gone from a very light cracked pistachio into that evergreen bow. Let's add in maybe a little bit of Lucky Clover. I'm gonna keep the brush with the appropriate one just so that I don't mix colors. We'll go into some Lucky Clover next. I'll start off the side here, add in some Lucky Clover. I'll do the same up here. And then I'm just going to take my evergreen bow and soften up some of that join. Again, you can see they are blending beautifully and it's not a lot of work at all. And then I'm going to take some pine needles. We'll go with our next one down here. I'm going to just turn my cardstock. This is why I like working on the glass mat because of course I can make as much mess as I want. I'm just going to take another piece of cardstock. When you're on Distress Oxides, because they have that pigment in, um, you want to make sure you don't touch with your fingers, you'll get fingerprints. Piece of kitchen towel, a glove, lots of options, but just don't touch it directly with your fingers. So again, I'm just going to touch in like this. Then I'm going to go back with my previous color and I'm going to blend the two together. Again, I'm getting an absolute seamless blend. I may have to eat those original skeptical um, options. You can see there I've gone over where my cardstock was, so I have a little bit of a stronger line. Let's go back up here. I should be able to blend that out quite well by adding some more ink layers in. You could also soften it by adding in a little bit of water. But that's what you get by adding cardstock in there. But you can see in general, apart from where I, of course, added my cardstock, I do have a really nice graduation throughout my card. So I do have blended those really nicely together. I thought we'd also try with a stencil. I'm working on the Tonic Ultra Smooth White Cardstock, which is my favorite crafting cardstock because it has a little bit of a coating. So if you're working with um, alcohol inks, alcohol markers rather, um, anything like that, you will get a really nice effect. So I'm working here with an ultra new stencil. This is called Feathered Leaves. And I've already pre-sprayed it in my uh, splat box with my Pixie Spray. So this is a temporary adhesive spray. Uh, I pre-sprayed it so it's going to stick down perfectly. You can see it's joined nicely to my cardstock. I'm just gonna recenter it slightly. But it means my stencil isn't going to move around and those little bits there that normally would kind of move around on us are not going to do that. So we're gonna get a nice crisp image. So I think that went with that and this went with this. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of cracked pistachio on here. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of all over color to start with. And then we'll just start adding in other colors as we go. And you can wash these Or again, you could have one per color family, but you wouldn't want to mix Distress Ink with um, your Distress Oxides because of that pigment diffusion. You'd want to keep separate ones or make sure you wash between changing. And it does say on the packaging to make sure you let them air dry. So we've added our cracked pistachio. Now we could go in and add some highlights with Evergreen Bow. So I'm just gonna add a few areas like this. I'm kind of using the same technique I would use with my alcohol markers of doing a darker shade, 
and then going back with my lighter shade and blending out. And then I'm going to go in with some Lucky Clover. Like so. Go back with some Evergreen Bow. Back to our Cracked Pistachio. And as I say, oxides are a pigment dye fusion, so they give you a little bit longer to work and blend, so you're going to be able to add more texture and depth in. Then we're going to go to our pine needles. So I think I'm going to add some of that here. Some down here. And I'm just going back through those shades again. And if you want to know how to store your Distress inks in Rainbow Order, uh, you can go over to the Ranger website and they have how to store them in that exact Rainbow Order. Um, and everything in my room is stored in Rainbow Order, so that's how I like it done. So you can see there I have a nice kind of blend all over. And now we get to do the fun bit, which is peeling off our stencil. And that pixie spray is held in place. You can see how I've got that beautiful, clean image. And that's because my stencil's stuck on with the pixie spray. But I can stick it onto vellum, I can stick it onto delicate papers, or I can stick it onto things like chipboard, Upo paper, all those things. It's just a light tack temporary adhesive. Now I can get rid of that adhesive on my stencil. If you want to check out more about Pixie Spray, you can check the video in the top right hand corner. I did a whole video on how to apply it, all those things. Storage wise, people ask me what do I do. So now I would just go and wash this stencil under warm water, perhaps a bit of dawn if I needed to. I mean with distress things, I really don't need the dawn. Um, and then how do I store it? I take a piece of freezer paper, six by six freezer paper, pop it behind and then pop it into my Brutus Monroe cargo sleeves, because that's how I store my stencils. And I leave the pixie spray on there because I'm gonna need pixie spray next time I use this stencil. The freezer paper keeps it fresh. It's just like having a backer on a sticker. That's exactly what freezer paper is. Again, links in the video description for all of these things I'm talking about. If you did want to get rid of it, use a bit of Goo Gone, use some isopropyl alcohol. You can just get rid of it if you wanted to. But I suggest leaving that pixie spray on there and using a piece of freezer paper inside your envelope and you'll find that works really really well but I might actually be a convert to these life-changing brushes I might have to eat those words I have to say I'm really impressed and I love how I have that beautiful blend that would be harder to achieve with my blending foam or my other brushes that I tend to use whereas this was really really easy to get that graduated effect um I would like if I could buy maybe like six or seven of these in one package as opposed to having to buy mix packs. Maybe that's an option. As I say, you can get makeup ones that do the same job, but people say that the Picket Fence ones have been sourced to be the best. And if you're a Perks member, you can get 10% off at Ellen Hudson and Ellen stocks these. So again, you can make some extra savings as a Perk member. If you're not already a Perks member, you are missing out on saving so much money on your crafty purchases. Check the top right hand corner to join. Just click that button. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell and give us a thumbs up for today's video. It really does help us. Uh, I will see you again tomorrow with some another maybe tip, trick, tutorial or something else of fun. Uh, so don't forget to also check those links in the video description. Also leave me a comment with your favourite Distress colour, whether it's an Oxide or the regular Distress colour. I'd love to know what your favourite is too. I have to say that mine is the Distress Oxide Cracked Pistachio. It's my absolute favourite. I use it all the time. And I will see you again tomorrow. Happy crafting everyone. Bye.